How are you guys doing this morning? I'm gonna close this computer, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, if you guys see the training manuals right in front of you, if you guys wanna open up to page 16, that would be great. Um, I'm really excited about this talk today because my favorite thing in life is selling a new set of Cutco to every single person that I see. Um, the one thing that I want you guys to do, now yesterday when I was in the talk, if you guys were at CSP Day, um, you know, someone asked me the question, how much Cutco did you sell in new business last year? And I said 300,000. Um, and a lot of people were like, 300,000 out of your 440 came from new customers. And um, it's correct that it did come from that uh, because if someone comes up to the booth that already owns Cutco, you know how excited we get when we see someone that already owns Cutco. I like selling them a couple pieces that they don't have in their set and going out to their house a couple weeks later and then upgrading them into an ultimate. I still count those people as new business because they're new that year. Does that make sense? But the reason why that number was so high is because of what I do at fairs and shows when it comes to a new customer. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you guys a quick question that I ask every person that comes out and cross trains with me. If you guys have a customer come to the booth and, you have, and one, the first customer that comes to the booth is someone that's already owned Cutco, they're super fired up and they come up and they say, what do you have new, okay? Or you have a customer that comes up to the booth and they're just looking at the knives and they're just all like, what is Cutco? And they don't own Cutco. Which customer are you more excited to see? and be honest with yourself. Are you more excited of seeing a customer that already owns Cutco? If so, raise your hand, okay? If you have a customer that does not own Cutco, are you more excited about that? Okay, there's only like four hands in the air, five hands in the air, okay? That's not good. And the reason why I say that's not good is because all the business at fairs and shows come from those people that have no clue what Cutco Cutlery is. And the thing is that if I ask them a simple question, as you guys can see, the first question is, do you guys have Cutco Cutlery? The thing is, if the customer goes, no, what is it? Okay, there's like a light that lights underneath me and I'm like, oh yes, this is gonna be good, okay? Um, because I am dying for those people to come up to the booth. And a lot of times all it is is just asking a simple question of hello, how are you? How's the show? Is there anything cool that you've seen today at the show? Okay, um, and the reason why a lot of people ask me this question is, hey, how do you get people to your booth? It's easy, if they look at the booth, you say hello, okay? <laughs> um, the, thing it's, the thing that's crazy about it is that a lot of you guys, what are you doing? You're sitting in the back of the booth on a chair. You're not paying attention. You're playing with your cell phone. You're playing a video game. You're doing everything but selling Cutco at the booth. Okay, as Mike Dowd will tell you, Curtis never sits, Curtis never sits, okay? The reason why I do not sit at a booth is because I'm waiting for that new customer to come up to the booth and I'm going to be professional because I am the face of Cutco. Does that make sense? If you're lollygagging and sitting in the back of the booth and all you're waiting for is that past customer that's gonna come up and buy a couple pieces, then you're really screwing yourself over, okay? And I'm just being honest with you because that's, that's not what you're there at the show for. You're there to represent Cutco and you're there to sell Cutco cutlery to every single person that walks by the booth, okay? It's a simple question, guys. Hi, how are you guys? Now the thing is, the customer goes, oh, we're doing great. Awesome, have you guys seen anything cool at the, at the show lately? And the thing is, just by asking that simple question, they're like, actually, you know, there's a lot of hot tubs here. And it's all like, I know, there's like one on every aisle. I was like, have you ever heard of Cutco? And they're like, no. And it's all like, hey, why don't you come over here? This might be something cool that you want to check out. And it might be the highlight of your day. Okay? Boom. The customer comes over and they're like, okay, show me what you got. Okay, no problem. I'm not going to sell you anything. I just want to show you a quick demonstration of what Cutco has to offer. Boom. It goes right into the approach. Does that make sense? Now, you guys can see there's an either or at the very beginning. If you have a customer that doesn't own Cutco and you ask them the question, have you ever heard of Cutco? And they say yes, yeah, you wanna say, well, why don't you have it, okay? Because the thing is, is it's asking them that loaded question of why don't I have it, okay? The first thing that goes through their head is, okay, I know people that own Cutco, why don't I have it? Oh, well, because it's the first time I'm seeing Cutco. Does that make sense? And then what it does is it instantly throws you into, they've already said yes in their mind to Cutco because you've already asked them the question of, why don't you own it? Does that make sense? Same thing if, if, they, if they haven't heard, or they have heard of Cutco and someone in the family does, go, oh, well, how long has she had it? 10 years? 
oh, well, you've been missing out for over 10 years. It's about time you get some Cutco knives. You know what I mean? Then it's just a confidence thing. Have you guys ever noticed it's all about the confidence of what you're saying? So today you guys are going to find out. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things that are small detailed things that go a long way with a customer. Okay? The big thing is that I ask loaded questions. The reason why I ask loaded questions and the questions that I ask are yes questions. Okay? Because if you ask more yes questions, what does that person do? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Hey, would you like to get that set? Yes. You know what I mean? There's not a really a no. If you are getting no's, that just means that you simply aren't doing something correct in the program. Okay? I'm not telling you guys to use my exact script if you don't want to, but I can tell you this. If you guys do use my script, you guys are going to be selling a lot of sets at the shows. Okay? And I'm going to teach you guys today how to do that. Now, the thing that you guys need to know too, when a customer comes up to the booth, anyone that has ever come cross training with me knows, if there is a new customer at the booth, they get my full attention. Okay? I don't care if you're a past customer. I don't care if you're a, you know, one of my favorite customers. Don't interrupt me when I'm with a new customer. Okay? You can interrupt them, tell them how great Cutco is, and I will simply tell them to leave the booth. Okay. Hey, you know, they're looking at a new set of knives. Is it all right if you guys go down the aisle and come back? I have some amazing discounts that I want to show you a little bit later, but thank you so much for telling my customer how great it is. Okay. The reason why you do that right away is because then that tells that person that's looking at Cutco for the first time that, hey, this guy's serious about showing me Cutco and he really wants me to get a set of knives. Okay. It's just a directional thing. Hey, push them off. Guess what? If they love Cutco, what are they going to do? They're going to come back to the booth because they respect you and they honor what you're doing with the customer. Okay? Most of the time they'll go, oh, you better buy it. If you don't buy it, we're going to be back here in five minutes. Okay? And the thing is, you'll notice that the customers will stand a little bit away and they'll watch what's going on okay? because they want to get that time with you when you're at the booth. Does that make sense? Um, now, how many of you guys take about 45 minutes to close a, a new set? Okay? 30 minutes? Okay, an hour. Okay, I've seen some reps, um, not naming any names, Josh Muller, um, <laughs> take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour with a customer just to sell them a set. Okay, and I thought this was interesting because you know Josh is the master at shows, so I'm sitting here going, okay, this is interesting. I was like, he should be a lot quicker with this. Like, what's going on here? You know, he would sell, he'd sell a signature, and I've already gotten two ultimates and a chest of flatware, and I'm working on a new galley set. Right? And I'm sitting here going, something's not right here. And the thing is that Josh and I talked about it. And the thing is, it's how you say it, when you say it, and how fast you say it with confidence. Okay? The thing is that you don't need all the flowery stuff in there to get customer to buy Cutco. The more direct you are with your customer, the faster you're going to sell Cutco. Okay? It's plain and simple. So as you guys see here on, on the list, we're going to go right down through it. Okay? Now, you get the leather out with the junk knife and stuff like that. The reason why it's important is you guys see this. Cutco is the number one knife company in the Uni United States. They've been around since the 1940s. The thing that's great about Cutco is it's all American made. It's guaranteed for life. There's some stuff that I'm going to ad lib in here for you guys because I think this is important. I made this basic for your team you know, on this, but you guys are advanced, so I'm going to give you guys a lot of advanced things. In this paragraph, when you're going through with the customer, Next, next thing that I want you guys to do is say on here, um, you know, Cutco's made in America. It's been around since the 1940s. It's guaranteed for life. But, okay, everything that you see on the table today that has a cutting edge is 100% American made. We do not put any foreign products in any of the pieces that you see in front of you, okay? This is huge. Now, I said cutting edges, okay? So you guys know all the Cutco knives are made here in America. The reason why I think this is important is because you guys know everybody's like, oh, China, 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 okay? So what I say in that, in that phrase is everything that you see in front of you is 100% American made, and there is no foreign products in any of the pieces that you see in front of you, okay? It's huge to say in that little paragraph because what it does is it builds that extra value with a customer. Does that make sense? Shaking your head, you guys are like, okay, yeah, no, okay. Um, it's very important that you guys talk about the forever guarantee, but do you guys see how fast I'm going through it? Okay, that's exactly how I tell the customer. 
We're made in America, we're guaranteed. We've been around since the 1940s. The thing that's great about Cutco is everything that you see in front of you, all the cutting edges here are 100% American made. Okay, there is no foreign products in any of the pieces that you see in front of you. But the thing that's great about Cutco is that we stand behind our forever guarantee, da 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 da. The thing is you're gonna see in this approach, I go through the guarantee three times. Why? Because I'm building the value with the customer, okay? So you guys can keep moving along into, the, in, into page 17, okay? The thing is that you guys, are, you guys are noticing right here, explain the forever guarantee, okay? The thing is that when you're doing the forever guarantee and you guys are explaining it, I want you to say American made and guaranteed so many times, but the thing that I want you guys to put in here is, okay? When you guys see here, right here, um, is when you buy a set of knives today, you'll never buy another set of knives again or sharpen them yourself ever. And then you tell this to the customer, I will be your personal representative and I will be the guy that will come out to your house and I will be the person that does this for you. Okay, it's a personal touch. We're already like touching the customer with that. Okay. Now, you guys know here, when we do the demo, what, what's the first knife that we demo? Okay, the table knife. It's very important that when you guys do the table knife, you guys do it where it's very impressive. The thing is that I don't do the table knife right away. I use the table knife as that extra sale. So in there, it talks about the table knife and you guys do the leather trick. What I want you guys to do is do it on a petite carver at first, okay, to show the edge. The reason why I want to do this is because then you don't have to use the petite carver to sell. And the thing is you can show the edge on all your other carving knives. Does this make sense? You guys kind of... I do the leather test with the petite carver. So to give you guys an idea, the thing is that you talk about the forever guarantee, you talk about the double D edge, right? The reason why a Cutco edge works so well is because it's a three recessed cutting edge. It cuts forwards, backwards, and straight down. It's not a normal serrated edge that has the whooping effect. It actually cuts forwards, backwards, and straight down. So go ahead and take this bargain knife here, and I want you guys to go ahead and try this. Normally with a serrated knife, it rips and tears, okay? And what you do is you rip and tear it on the table knife, right? Next thing that you do is then you hand them the petite carver, okay? Because what part of the petite carver is never used? The very back of the blade, okay? And the reason why I use this is because when I run the strip of leather up the back two pieces of it, it just zips right through it, okay? And the customer's like, holy crap. And then you're all like, yeah, watch this. Then I double the leather, then I four times the leather, and then I eight times the leather on the petite carver, okay? The customer's like, okay, this, this edge is legit. And then I go, you know what's crazy about this? Every single one of our sets comes with these. These are our table knives, okay? And these have the exact same edge on them as well. Mike Dowd knows. Put the, you stack the leather up, push straight down with it, and then you hand them the table knife, okay? The reason why I do that is because it sells the edge, but then they're going, oh, this little thing can do that, okay? It no, no longer becomes an issue of, oh, this looks cheap, okay? The next thing it does is it makes it look like even this little thing is great, so I wanna buy it now, okay? The next knife that you guys see on here is the Santuco knife. The one key that I have to you guys is that the flower that I'm talking about, the flowering up and stuff like this, is that you guys have all these fruits and vegetables and you have all this crap that you have in your booth and you're cutting up tomatoes and bread and grapes and limes and lemons and peaches and cantaloupes and stuff like that. It's like, why are you spending the money for that? Okay, a potato does everything for you. What you do is you cut off a sliver of the potato, hand them the Santuco knife, and you say, try this, okay? And then what you do is you hold the tip of the, the Santuco knife for them and you allow them to chop with it, okay? You ask them, is that sharper than the knife you have at home? Do you guys see that in there? Is that sharper than the knife you have at home? You guys see that? No, Santuco. I want you guys to put under here um, the uses where it says uses. The question, the phrase that you guys are going to put in there, sorry, I wrote it in here, but you guys don't have it. It says right here, is that sharper than the knife that you have at home, okay? The reason why I'm doing this is so, because we're about to go into how you guys, um, you guys do your guys' homemaker, how you customize it, and the reason why, okay? So you guys need to add that in there. 
is this sharper than the knife that you have at home? What's the customer gonna say? Yes. Okay, if they don't, sharpen your knife, okay? That's why we got a new Santuco knife today, right? Put it out on the table, okay? The next knife that you guys see here is the cheese knife, okay? The reason why I only use three knives to do the demonstration is because what is the customer looking for when they come to the booth? Does the knife cut, okay? Is it sharp? That's all they want to do. They use two knives. They already know that they're sharp. They know that they're quality. Does that make sense? So with the cheese knife, yes, what do we do? We cut potatoes. Why do we use potatoes? Because that's all you need. A potato is great, okay? And you guys are like, well, how do you sell a bread knife? Easy, you put the tip down and drag it through the potato. Simple, okay? It's a bread knife, it works great, try it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it cuts just like all the other knives, okay? Same edge. Um, the thing is that it drives me nuts when I see people that are, they have all this stuff at the booth and I'm all like, you don't need it. Use a potato, the edge still works on a potato. The thing is that if you see your customer grabbing the potato with the slicer and they're about to slice something, okay, you go, no, 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 this is a slicing knife. You put it down and you drag. Does that make sense? Then they drag it and they're like, oh, this is sharp, okay? It's a potato, okay? The thing is that I have here with the, potato, or with the cheese knife, okay? You guys know it's not a cheese knife, it's a delicate knife. It's for your delicate fruits and vegetables, just so you guys know that, um, so you guys can cross that off. But the thing that I want you guys to do for sure is use the junk knife through the potato, okay? And I want you guys to make it so that it's very hard for them to cut with it, okay? The thing is that a lot of you guys forget that one thing and that's cutting with the junk knife because the, the crappier the knife is that you have, the worse that it cuts, the better it is for Cutco as well. Does that make sense? The thing is, do you guys rock with a cheese knife? How many of you guys rock with a cheese knife? Okay, some of you who does not rock with the cheese knife. Okay, if you do not rock with the cheese knife, I want you to start doing this because this is one of those special things that I do. Hold the tip just like the Santuco knife and what I do is I say, now go ahead and rock up and down. You'll see that it feels like you're not cutting hardly anything at all. Does that make sense? Customer cuts with it and they're like, holy crap, this is awesome. Okay, then it just gets them into it. The reason why I show them the Santuco knife and the cheese knife is because they only come in what two sets? Signature and ultimate set. So the first thing is that when I'm selling Cutco to them, I say, well, these two knives usually come in these two sets. Does that make sense? But the thing that's nice is you guys know that we customize things, okay? So that's what we're getting into today is customizing, okay? This is very important because when you guys are, custom, you guys are customizing things, you know, just like I was telling you guys yesterday about customizing, the thing is that I watch the reaction of the customer when they're customizing things. How many of you guys don't customize at all? Good, I'm so glad. The thing is that when you guys are customizing, it's easier for you to get the customer to buy stuff just by taking things out. Now, how many of you guys are already setting up the set where it already has the homemaker already has the cheese knife, the hearty slicer, and the Santuco in it, okay? Now, how many of you guys are noticing that they're still buying it, but they're not buying it as quickly as if you customize it, okay? The thing is that I what I want you guys to do is not customize it before you put, you know, before you show it to the customer because you guys want to make sure that the customer takes ownership of putting that knife in there, okay? Now, anyone that works with me, I'm really quick at the doing this. I just say, now let me show you what most people are doing. Okay, so you guys want to put this, this phrase in there. Now let me show you what most people are doing here today at the show, is what they're doing is they're going ahead and taking out pieces in this set that they necessarily don't want, okay? And the reason why we're doing this is so that you can actually put the more expensive pieces in the set and pay for the cheaper ones later, okay? And the thing is, the customer's like, so what are you saying? And I'm like, well, what most people do is they take this knife out, okay, and I talk about the spatula spreader. The spatula spreader's awesome, but the thing is that a lot of customers, they really, really like this knife, the delicate knife. And the thing is, the customer's like, yeah, we absolutely love that knife. Okay, perfect, would you guys want this in the set? Question is a yes question, okay? The customer's like, yeah, I want that in the set. Awesome, now the next thing you do is I put the, the nine inch chef knife in my homemaker set, okay? Now, the reason why I do that is because I, when I pick it up, I'm like, are you gonna use a huge knife like this? Okay, first thing that goes through your head, it, the customer's head is, no. Would you like to put this knife in there? And you show them the Santuco knife, what is it? Yes, okay? 
Now, what is the customer doing? They're already taking ownership in it, but they don't know that they're taking ownership in it. Does that make sense? I'm doing the work for the customer, but they think in their head that they're the ones that came up with the idea. Does that make sense? So the thing is that next thing you know, you say, now do you um, butcher any meats? No, I don't butcher anything. Okay, well, you don't want this knife then, do you? Because this is a butcher knife. No, I don't want that. Perfect, let me take that out and let's put in this knife. This knife right here is a hearty slicer. You know, raw meats, cooked meats, frozen stuff, pits of mangoes, peaches, avocados, butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash. Do you have to show them how it works? No. I, I, people are like, oh, well, let me show you how it works. Let me go ahead and, uh, no, you're just wasting five minutes of that customer's time. Okay, put it in the set, okay? And then what you do is you go, is there anything else in the set that you see you wouldn't use? What's the first thing the customer says? I don't need forks. Perfect. So why don't we do this? Let's take this $40 fork out and let's put in this $100 pair of shears. Okay? And they're like, they don't know the price yet because you guys haven't even told them the price, right? So when you say you're taking a $40 item out and putting in a $100 item, what's going through their head? Holy crap, this stuff is expensive, right? But he told me that I'm not paying for the expensive stuff. So then they're going, oh, this is going to be a cheap set of knives. Does that make sense? So it's doing the reverse for their head, their mind. Does that make sense? And then the next thing that you say is the reason why we are taking out the cheap stuff is so that when I go to your house to sharpen your knives in a couple years, what ends up happening is most customers go into these sets here, okay? And then I point to the, the ultimates or you know the signatures, okay? And then the customers are like, okay, so you're planting what? The seed so that later you guys can go out and sell them Cutco, right? So the thing is that once you guys are customizing the set and you guys ask us, you know, what do you, you know, what other things in here you don't want, you put the shears in because what do we do? We cut the penny at the end. You guys see the approach? We cut the penny at the very end. You don't do it during the middle, okay? And it gets them already buying it already. Now the next thing is that do you guys want to keep customizing the set? No, because you need to move on. So the next question that you're going to ask the customer is like, so can I show you how much this costs? And they're like, yes. Then you go into um, Williams-Sonoma. You guys go to williamsonoma.com, put your name in there. They're going to send you a catalog right away. Okay, They're actually putting the knives back into the catalogs. Does that make sense? So you guys get those catalogs sent to you so you guys have it, so you have, can go into it and sell it right away. Okay. Now, this is where we close on the customer. Okay, you guys ready for the closing on it? The thing is that you guys know I don't ask, do you want to get this today? I said, do you want this in black or white? Okay, but what you do, these are key phrases that you're going to say right when you do it. Now, unlike the, the store brands that you see in stores, okay, they'll charge you anywhere from $3,000 all the way to $1,600. Now the thing that's great about Cutco is since we are rated a consumer die just Best Buy, that means that the value of Cutco is actually higher than the price of Cutco. Okay? Now with Cutco, since we're made here in America, you guys, this is not in the book. This is like for you guys. Okay? So you guys can keep looking, but it's not in there. Um, the thing is that now the thing that's great about Cutco being made in America is that we want you to buy one set of knives and only one set of knives. The thing that's great about this is that we actually can control the market and the price by here, you buying it at the show, okay? Now the thing is that the company, if you go to their website, you'll see this set here sold for 1079 but the thing is that I totally customized your set and it cost way more than that set, okay? Actually the set that you're looking here now costs about 1347 uh, depending on what you put in the set, okay? Now, the thing that's great about here is, like I said, you don't pay any upgrade fees, but we have a huge discount going on at the show. Our set today is only $889, okay? But the thing that's nice about buying Cutco here today is that you will have me as your personal representative. I will come out to your house. I'll sharpen the knives for you for free. You buy once, never buy again. And the thing is that you have a product that's made in America that's going to last for your kids, your kids, their kids, their kids, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you were to buy the set today, what color of knives would you get? Okay. First thing a customer is going to say is what? The color that they want. Okay. And then you say, okay, perfect. Do you want to get that in black or, or do you want to get that in cherry wood or oak? Close the set. Does that make sense? And you do it so quickly that they have no time to say no on anything that they're doing. Okay. Get their credit card, off they go. Five pay.
about buying a U.S. product and you have one set for the rest of your life, and then you said we control the market. It's not pretty much the thing that's great about being made here in America is we can control the market and the price point of our sets. And they're going to cost way less than your bargain store brands. Okay? The things that I have here, guys, is quick answers. Make sure you know how to properly upgrade or customize your sets. Okay? Um, and then the thing is that um, make sure you guys are talking about get rid of the cheaper ones so that later on you can buy them and you don't have to pay for it today. So what you do is you automatically, the pieces that you use, you automatically take those pieces out and you put whatever pieces that you want in the set. So the thing is you go, now what most people are doing here today, okay, is they're taking out the cheap pieces and they're putting in the more expensive pieces. So the first piece that they're taking out is this right here, the $50 spreader, right? 59, I say $50 spreader and then I say $70 cheese knife, okay? And the reason why I say that is because there's a, price difference so that they know that there's a price difference. So the whole time that you're doing it, you talk about prices, the difference of the prices. The second part of that, so taking out the cheap pieces and putting the more expensive pieces. More expensive pieces, but the thing about buying here today is you don't have to pay for any upgrade fees. Does that make sense? Because the thing is the customer's thinking of what? Upgrading and they're like, okay, if I normally upgrade, it's gonna cost me more, right? So the thing is you say, you're not gonna pay for the upgrade fee today. Okay. So, does that make sense, guys? Be excited about your, um, your new customers, okay? Because they're the key to Cutco, okay? The thing is that ask specific questions, but the thing is watch your customer and watch their mannerisms, okay? If there's something that you guys are saying in, a, in your approach that's wrong, okay, or they don't agree with, you can tell by their body language, okay? They'll sit there and go, oh, you know, or they'll go like this, or they won't use the knife, or you know what I mean? So the thing is that you gotta reevaluate what you're doing and change it. So you go, okay, well, get him involved. If you get the husband involved and he's liking it, you know, I usually have the husband cut with a steak knife and then I have the wife cut with the Santuco knife and then I have the husband use the cheese knife, okay? Because he's all like, oh, hon, you gotta try this one. This one's awesome, you know what I mean? And then it just becomes a selling thing. Perfect? Okay. Awesome, thanks.